This must be the most famous tree in Australia, and is certainly the largest relic that's left of the tragic Burke and Wills expedition of 1860. Burke left Melbourne with an enormous group of camels and horses and people, but there are arguments and the group split up. So Burke and Wills and a few others came along here to Cooper Creek to make their depot and to wait for the rest of the party to come along. And when he got here, as was the custom, he made his mark on the tree. You can still see it. B for Burke and 65, the number of the camp. And while they were waiting for the rest of the party, they built a stockade to protect their goods. It was about here, made of vertical logs, and it went all the way around the tree. Now, Burke was very impatient to be off, so he left an assistant in charge here, Brahi. And he was to wait here, guard the stores, and wait for the party to catch him up with the rest of them. Burke, Wills, King and Grey were the fourth that went off to find the top of Australia. Burke said he'd be back in three months, not to wait any longer for him, and the four of them went overland that way. And they got to the top and they got back again. But they took too long to do it and they pushed themselves too hard. Grey died on the trip. And by the time they got back here, over four months had passed. Brahe had given up on them. In case they turned up, he carved the now famous inscription in there. It was dig under three feet west. And with one of his men dying and his food running out, Brahi and the little party here set off back on the road to Melbourne. When Burke, Wills and King arrived, they saw the inscription, the place was deserted, they dug up the cache, which was down here, and with the food and a note that were buried here, they realised they missed that party by only seven hours. They were in despair at being deserted, but they couldn't follow them, they were too weak. So they determined the only way they could get off the Cooper was to go over in that direction, over to Mount Hopeless and out through Adelaide. So with what they could gather here, they set off. But the whole thing was a total disaster. Certainly the Cooper does run towards Mount Hopeless that way, but it doesn't go very far. It runs out into sand hills in the most inhospitable country you could imagine. And whichever channel they tried, they couldn't find water and simply had to turn back. And they trudged all the way back again until round about here. Well, at this stage, they were in a hopeless position. They'd had to shoot both camels and they were eating the meat. They were increasingly reliant on the Aborigines who lived around here for food and assistance. Wills rode all the way up there to the dig tree to try and find a relief party, but he didn't find one and came back here more exhausted. Burke and King continued to gather native food, but they got steadily weaker too. And calamity struck round about here, where they had their provisions stored in a whirly, because the cooking fire sent sparks into it and almost everything they had was burnt. They had nothing left. Well, they knew they had to find the Aborigines to look for help. The Aborigines had gone since, but they didn't know which way to go, and Wills couldn't go any further. So in another Aboriginal whirly, they made a bed and put Wills in it. They buried his notebook somewhere here. That was later recovered, and from that we know what Burks and Wills actually did achieve on their massive trip. And at Wills' insistence, they left him. They, he gave them a letter for his father, because they knew he was dying, and the two of them, Burke and King, quite exhausted, started to trudge back towards the big tree. But this is as far as they got, a distance of about 30 kilometres. And then Burke simply couldn't go any further. He collapsed there, he wrote his final messages, and within a very short time, he was dead. Now, King must have been extraordinarily tough because, exhausted as he was, he gathered up their provisions, turned round, and went all the way back again to where he'd left Wills to see what he could do for him. But he couldn't do anything because Wills had died in the meantime. And King was just too weak to bury them. He left them where they lay. But he didn't die. The tribe of Aborigines that lived on the Cooper, they've all vanished now, were very good to King. They befriended him and fed him, and he stayed with them until he was rescued. And that was done by the explorer Howard, who came from Melbourne overland to see what had happened to the expedition. He found King, and with King's help, went to where Burke and Wills' bodies lay. And it was Howard who buried them, Burke here and Wills down the river. At least the bits he could find, because the dingoes had been at the corpses. And Howard also carved on the tree the initials of each of the explorers. You can't see that today, it's buried under several feet of silt. Howard took King back to Melbourne, and King never came back to the Cooper, but Howard did. The bodies of Burke and Wills don't lie here anymore. Howard dug them up and took the bones back to Melbourne and there was an enormous public funeral. And the bodies of Burke and Wills today lie in the Melbourne Cemetery. King didn't last much longer. His health was ruined through what he'd been through here. 
and 10 years later, he died too. And today, his body lies not far from those of Burke and Wills.